decision was made to pair with Molly Crew. Could you explain how that decision was made and why? Well, I, I don't always make great decisions. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually, you know, Nikki and Tommy and Vince and, and Mick have all have been good friends of mine ever since we split up in 1989 at the Moscow show. So, you know, we talked about it. One of the reasons why I hadn't done it earlier was because I thought it was too similar of a show. You know, the, the fan experience, um, it, it was just more pyro, more thing, you know, that, that were the same. But when we really sat down and talked and, and, and put together a great production, I think it was a really, really bang for the buck for the people because they got to see two different types of music, two different, completely different shows, uh, Molly was just, a, you know, over the top circus, and, and Kiss was Kiss. So it really turned out to be a, 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 a great show, and the guys really got along tremendously, you know, well. Which, you know, when you have, you have to try to get dogs and cats to live together as one, uh, it, was, uh, it, it, was a, it was a little bit of, you know, moving around, but that's what we do. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. All right, on the other side over there, next question, Doc. Hi, Doc. My name's Alan from London. Over the years, you've managed my two favorite bands, which is Kiss and Motley Crue, so thank you for the two, and that was brilliant. Um, could you tell us a bit about the pros and cons of the yeah. Kiss and Motley Crue? No, there's actually, there wasn't really any pros and cons on, on the tour because it went really smooth, and, they, and uh, Motley is a huge Kiss Fan. I put I put Molly Crew on Kiss in 1984. We did uh, two shows with them, and they were just such huge fans that uh, I think the respect that Molly has for Kiss really went a long way because they were they talked about it. They uh, you know did shout outs on stage, and so I think it was a, a, a really good respect factor between the two of them. All right, over here, next question. Hello, Doc. My name is Parker Scroggins. I'm from Oklahoma. I'm 43 years old, and I've been a KISS fan for 35 of those years. And my question to you 
is uh, next year with the KISS being their 40 year anniversary, is there anything extra special planned for them? Well, we're going to get Gene to lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, actually, we are. We're, we've looked at all new technology to try to give the fans a better experience and a more over the top show. You know, like, like I said last year, you know, if you're going to run with the big dogs, you can't just like a puppy. So, you have, you know, so you have to come up with new ideas and new gags and, and, I, and I believe the monster, you guys heard some of the monster songs. And, and most of them sound like they should be in a kiss show. You know, they, they, it doesn't sound too, too crazy here. So they're like you go, oh fuck, I gotta hear a new song now. <laughs> so uh, so we're, we're gonna, the show will be bigger and better as always. Thank you. Here you go. Doc, I'm Doc from Rochester, Minnesota. I got a two-part question. With the Ace Freely strange and unusual things, with all the bands you had, what's the word or the strangest thing you had? And with the current lineup of Kiss, what's the most bizarre or unusual thing that's happened? Oh Jesus! <laughs> I couldn't hear all day. Uh, uh, both of those. Um, you know, with the, with the lineup of uh, with Ace and Peter, uh, it was torture. Uh, it, it was an everyday torture situation. You know, and, the, and it was kind of like four guys playing together that really didn't want to play together, and which I hate. Which I think is is. Uh, and, and I think it translated a little bit to the, outside of the reunion tour that we did, it looked like they were mailing it in, you know, and I had to stay out every night to get them motivated to, to, to do it. And when, um, when we lost 300 pounds of bad news between the two of them, um, it, and brought Tommy and Eric in, it's just been a dream. These guys are, they're funny, they have, they have fun together. They're, we're always together. You know, it's like, no, we're not gay, but we're always together. <laughs> and, and they're the best friends, since every night. You know, we go to dinners and go out, and, you know, so. And, and, I, and I think that the, this is the best line of musically that, that you could, you know, that you can tell. But, it, but, but with this lineup, I believe that, that this is the best show for the people. And I, I can't believe it. I think Tommy plays amazing. Now, and Eric. And Eric's one of the best. And I've had a lot of great drummers. Uh, but Eric is just an amazing drummer. Yeah, I, I, I always kid Eric because you know, he doesn't feel like you know, he's not the original member, so I would say to him, hey Eric, what are you doing Saturday? He goes, oh, I don't know. He said, you want to come over and paint my house? <laughs> so we, we have a lot of fun with each other. So. <laughs> All right, next question. Oh, that comes. I'm wondering if you could tell Gene and Paul, uh, thank you for me. Um, Back in 1985, I was at a, I was at the silent concert up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they were asked by my aunt and uncle to dedicate a song for their son that was killed in a car accident, and, and um, they dedicated Tears Are Falling in the concert for him. And I really just started crying. I'd like to ask you to tell them thank you. Hello, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Bullshit. These guys are big fan fans. That's how they started the band. They wanted to. They wanted to have have a band that they wanted to go see. Okay, so that and they've always tried to take care of the fans. I think their meet and greets are the best meet and greets that you can do with the acoustics. And, and, and they seriously spend time. I mean, 
they're having a really good time and they can't and we're going to do this again you know and again and then again and then we'll do the you know the wheelchair one <laughs> Gene Simmons family, Joel's, and watching him on Gene Simmons family, Joel's, you wouldn't think that he might always want to go on a cruise. So I was just wondering, was there any trouble getting him on the cruise? Well, you know, Gene's not the most adventurous guy. I mean, he went on vacation once. You know, he kind of quit school because of his recess. Uh, he, he likes to work and marketing and this and that and I, you know, I go through 800,000 emails a day on uh, that, so, uh, it, but it wasn't hard to get him on the cruise because he knew, knew that it should be close to, to be close to the fans. They were all so blown away that they got to play where you guys were right there because we never get a chance to do that. and they always have, you know, 16 guys out there, you know, with muscles, muscles in their shit. <laughs> and, uh, and not allowing anybody to get close to the fans. And they, they were just talking about last night, they said, it was so cool that we were almost walking in the audience, you know what I mean? And people were taking picks off their guitars, and, you know, and it was so, it, they were just having a great time. And that's, and that's what this is about. You know, this is, this is a payback for you guys and them. Because they don't get to do this. They never get a chance to do this. And if you notice this year, compared to last year, they're all on the boat walking around, having fun. They're not hiding in their rooms. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, Paul is, he's, he's out everywhere. You know, and, and uh, so they really like the connection with the fans. Because they, they talk about connection with the fans but they don't really get a chance to, you know, pick your brain, talk to you, me neither. You know, I, when I talk to fans at shows, they go, oh, that's the best issue I ever saw. I said, what didn't you like about it? Because that's what I want to hear. Because that way we can change it. That way we can change it for the fans. Because it's not us up here playing for us. It's us playing for you guys. Hi, Doc. My name is Scott Armstrong, and I'm from Kansas City. Two things. First, a comment. Second, a question. The first comment is thank you for having these cruises because this is my second one, and last year I met the love of my life on this cruise. Lisa Kramer, okay. So, second, the second is a question. In the uh, Sonic Boom package in 2009, there, were the, there was the disc of 15 re-records of classic songs. I don't know about anybody else, but I thought those were fantastic. <laughs> with the, with the pair of uh, any consideration being given to do some more re-records of some of the class, some other classic material? Uh, we always, well, we just put together about a five-year program at Universal to go back in and take stuff that nobody's seen and nobody's heard and put together, you know, great original packages. Because I think that's what, you know, more so than just hearing, you know, Strutter done for the 16th time, or 26th time, or 115th time, <laughs> that on the record, uh, that we put together packages that mean something. You know, that has uh, enough content that is different, so they're collectibles. They're, 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 kind of like pieces of art. And so that's what we, we're planning over the next five years to do that. Thank you very much. Congrats on your new love. I mean, we're not afraid to sell shit. I know a lot of the histories. Like you said, you've been managing some of the biggest bands in the world for 35 years. What was like the most frightening ordeal that you had to deal with uh, in managing any of those bands? 
Jesus, there's, I mean, again, there's, I mean, there's things that when you would sit there in a hotel knowing that any day you could walk into a bedroom and one of them would be dead. Because, you know, I mean, these guys were, I mean, a lot of them were just out of control at that time. So that was probably the biggest fear that you would have, is that you're going to lose one of them, and then, which would be horrible. And then, you know, the car crashes and the arrests and the bites. Yeah, yeah, the uh, biting was always good. <laughs> when you were bad by people, that's always good. <laughs> So um, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's important. Also, you know, managing bands, you know, it's like especially young bands that are blowing up. You know, most of them have less than a high school education. Um, they only got in a band so they could get laid. Um, not very good musicians to begin with, uh, and then they want that lifestyle. They want to be the bad boys. You know, they want they want to, you know, low IQ, high RPM, and um, and so it, turning them around and finding their paths so they can stay here for 40 years and not die at 27. Uh, the people that can't handle that type of success or afraid to lose it. You know, so I think those type of things are really. You really have to spend a lot of time with, with people kind of molding them and find their path. That's it. Here we go. Hi, Doc. My name is Debbie from North Carolina. This is our second Kiss Cruise. Um, for Kiss Cruise 3, would you consider inviting Bruce Kulick and his band? <laughs> I mean, they're all they're all great friends, and you know, I mean, Eric's been in and out of the band several times, and um, and Bruce. So I mean, they they're all very good friends. So yeah, it would be considered. I think he was, I think he was doing something though. I think we did talk to Bruce about it. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, we talked to him at the expo, and he's he's so willing to come. So. <laughs> Hi Doc, uh, I'm Keith, I'm over from Scotland in the UK. I would just like to ask you, are there any UK dates being planned for next year? I, I, I didn't get that one. <laughs> and where are, you, where are you from, Scotland? Yeah. That's why. <laughs> We're separated by a common language. Are there any UK dates being looked at for next year? Are you going to come over to? Yeah, we're, we're, we're putting together different tours now. We leave, we actually leave tomorrow night from Buenos Aires. And then, and then we do uh, Brazil and Paraguay and stuff, and then we, come, then we come back. We have Australia planned in March. Uh, we have Japan in March. Uh, we have May and June in Europe. Um, we're going to do up to several, but we'll do like three different lines of Europe. We're going to do like three weeks on and then off, go someplace else and come back. It's going to be a little bit different type of a tour than our usual, our grind, and, and I want to do, we want to do some more of this stuff, the special nights for charities and stuff like that. And uh, we went over to London last year. Warriors and and, uh, and that. So we work with the. We've donated over a million dollars to the initiative. Not just here, but we went over to England and played a free show for the military for, for all the you know um, 
soldiers in, in, in England that fought over there. So we, so we stayed pretty true to our, our causes because that's what it's about. It's, you know, we're able to do shit like this because of these people. Yeah, so this is... So yes, it's really, really, you'll be able to get a ticket, a couple of shirts, a program, start saving. Hi, this is Kelly from Mesa, Arizona. I have a question. I saw you on Family Jewels. You ate a thousand dollar Sunday that you shared with Shannon. How good was that? <laughs> well, I love sweets. <laughs> I, I'm a freak for it. Uh, but it, you know, you get stuff like that and you go, really? <laughs> like, was it that good? I mean, I didn't orgasm or anything. So, it's like, for a thousand bucks, you should be doing something. <laughs> Hi, I'm Randy from East Rutherford, New Jersey, and my question is, on a regular tour, what's three things each KISS member has on their rider? Oh, let's see, Jean, cookies, <laughs> and, uh, and, well, they, they basically have they basically eat the same shit every night. And I don't know why, and I don't know who does this, but for 17 years I've been there, we have turkey, we have chicken, and we have pasta. Every night. <laughs> and none, they don't eat any of them. He eats some cookies, and then he takes the, but now he doesn't, he's been really good about the cookies. But, but uh, He'll take cottage cheese and, and, and eat that, and all the, all the food kind of goes to waste. And I say, I never eat her. Why the chicken? No one's eating that piece of chicken. But we have, it's kind of like the balance of nature out there because, you know, it's like when an animal dies, you know, in the woods, and the scavengers come out, that's our road crew. <laughs> And that's, 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 that's part of the road crew. It starts with the back line guys. Those are the rock stars. They've got the, the two guitars, right? So they come in first and pillage everything that they can do. And then it just goes down from their stage hands and it all gets eaten anyways. Hi, Don. My name's Janine from Perth, Western Australia. My question is, are you coming to Perth next year? Uh, right now, we're actually planning on Perth, and I love Perth, by the way. That's one. It's one of my that's favorite. Town. That's one of my favorite to towns in the world. I mean, we've had so much fun in Perth, and it's such a beautiful. You know, it's, it's like 1950 there. You know, and, and it's kind of like California weather. It's, it's dry. Uh, it's on the ocean, and it's it's, it's actually this isn't the furthest point in the world. The furthest, we travel 22 hours straight here. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we'll see you in Thank you. And I'll, and I'll be able to pick you out in your pajamas. Where am I? I'm Sarah from Melbourne, Australia, and my question is, um, what do you think the best show was that Kiss have played? Wow, that's tough. Um, I'll tell you, the, the one I liked the best was the acoustic on the deck. Yeah. They, they couldn't remember a fucking song, but they, <laughs> but they, but they had some fun up there. And, and I like that stuff. I like that kind of free stuff to where, you know, even the last two shows, it, it was like, there was no set list. Not that you couldn't tell that. But uh, there was no set list, and then we just listened to people talk, and, and Sometimes, as you can tell, pull out a song that they hadn't played, you know, forever, and, and, and would play it. So I, I, I like that kind of free form kind of thing instead of everything so precise and it's just a show. Hey, Doc. Was uh, Motley Crue better behaved on this tour than when you were managing? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, number one, I had 
had to remind Mickey to turn 50. And uh, he would tell me, because I was turning 30, that I should be put into a camp. <laughs> because I had no use uh, uh, for society after 30. <laughs> but they were like 18 or something then. So, uh, yeah, they didn't bite anybody. They, they, I didn't see anybody you know, piss on the Alamo or, or anything. So it was, uh, they were very well behaved, actually. You know, there's, you know, Tommy's a great kid. And uh, he's not a kid anymore, but he's uh, just a great energy and a great person. And, and Nicky's turned into a really good businessman. And, you know, they, they just, uh, and Ben's still. <laughs> You know, and Nick is just a sweetheart, so yeah, no, this is it. No, this is a walk in the park for when I'm here. Thank you. Hi, Doc. My name's Dave. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Um, as a licensed pyro, um, how do I get a job working with kids? <laughs> well, you blow up a lot of shit. Uh, you actually, uh, you know, you go to the pyro companies. And, and, and talk to them and get out there. That's what you know, I try to tell people when they want to get on the road, which is really, being on the road is not the best thing in the world, okay? By far, because you're away from home most of the time. It's a lot of work. People go, oh, well, look, you travel the world. You're in a bus with 12 guys that are farting and everything else. <laughs> and you go, that's not cool as that. <laughs> And uh, so you, you, it's kind of like, you really have to be dull for this because I've been doing this, like I said, 35 some years. And um, I still see guys that are out there that are 65, to 70 years old doing the same shit that they did when they were 20. You know, out on the road, no family life, no kids, been married three, three times. And most of the road is just find a girl that they don't like and buy them a house. <laughs> but they, they, they skip the shit about it because they're very upset. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough on the road, but, you know, um, you know if, you're, if, you're, if I was young, if I was 20 some years old or something right out of high school, you know, you can stop some money away, you know, if you don't get into that whole roadie thing and uh, save, save some money because you don't spend, they don't spend a penny. They'll spend a penny, you give them per diems, they get uh, three meals a day, they get the, so they don't spend anything. So they can just, you know, come off a tour and they have a lot of money. Of course. Thank you. My name's Jessica from Louisiana. My question is, how easy is it to manage Gene since he's gotten married? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, you know, he, he's he's been. Gene is a, a, a not only a great friend of mine, but he's my partner, and so I think it's different because his whole he's changed his whole life around, and um, to to the better for him and and, uh, and and Shannon. Shannon's a great girl, and so. And some some things, it's much easier because he's he's more in tune with his family and stuff. I think I think Gene said his family jewels really got that family as a really because he was always touring, so he was like most of us. You didn't get the chance to see your kids. Well, for 300 episodes, he was there with them, and it really brought that family together. And that's why they got married. I think that's why they got married because they just. Realize that they were the best friends. And so it's been so, it's been a lot easier. Um, my second question is um, I was on the cruise last year, and other than getting to meet the band, you were the most entertaining thing on the ship. <laughs> um, have you written a book or thought about writing a book about all of this stuff? <sighs> I've been talking to people about it, and it's, it's hard to write a book that, A, 
you know, they, they want to hear the juicy shit. Okay, they don't, they don't, you know, don't want to hear when I'm Dr. McGee from Palos Park, and you know, you know, people fall asleep. And, and one of the things that I've always had to fight with is that I'm kind of in the inner sanctum of a band. So I'm like your father, I'm like, you know, the therapist, I'm like, you know, I love, they all, I carry crayons and coloring books, and trying to keep them busy on airplanes and shit. Uh, but, um, uh, so it's, it's tough to, to do a book that, that, you know, I would never do a tell-all book or anything like that because it, that's not right. But uh, there will be a book coming out. I think I'll call it Shit Happens. <laughs>
for the tour, right? Yes, and we're going to do the whole monster tour. Hey Doc, my name is Andrew from the World's Best Kiss Tribute Band, Mr. Steve. Uh, uh, my question for you is, did you have anything to do with, or did you hear anything about, the much rumored Skid Row reunion with Sebastian Bach? Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, we've been, we've been talking about this for, for years, and I believe that there will be one. Um, I don't know for how, how soon that will happen, um, but I believe that, that will, it, it will happen in the next few years. Hi, I'm Nancy. I'm here with my sister Marlene celebrating life, and we're from London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I, have a comment. I have a question. My uh, comment is I want to thank you and the band and Sixth Man for making this the best life experience next to having my children. Thank you so much. My question is, you mentioned earlier about causes, um, and I know that each of the members are, um, they have their causes that they support, and my question is, when they decide on the cause that they're going to support. Do they have to kind of consult with each other, or do they, can they do their own personal causes because that they are a band and they represent each other? Uh, it's it's like a group decision of, of what we're going to do because we they all love children to do suffer children and we do a lot of suffer children. And you know, in in this day and age when you're a celebrity, you know you get the phone rings every day. You know, uh, we did the Lifting Lives with Darius Rucker, right? And so we had every charity calling him. And you just can't do them all. You love to do them all. So you have to kind of go, no, this, this trip we're focused on, on this, uh, and, and this charity, whether it's Wounded Warriors or whether it's uh, Children's Hospital or, or St. Jude's or whatever it is. So. Uh, but it's a group decision about what we feel is the most important, what we can affect. We try to find, because people just say, oh, oh, well, we do this for the Red Cross. Well, I don't know what the fuck the Red Cross does. Okay? I don't know if they help people or if they're supposed to, or I don't know. But you just give money, but you don't, you don't see a actual, you know, a, a tangible thing that you can say, that they do. So we try to find stuff that's like the wounded warriors that do rehabilitation for, for soldiers that have been over there mentally and physically. And uh, communities is a higher hero where you can actually see getting the people back into the community. And, and you see where your money's going. So those are the types of programs that we, we try to do that, uh, to help children and everything else. We try to find something that we know that we can see the needle move with what we do for them. And thank you for that. Hey Doc, I'm Oliver from Germany and I want to say thank you for my second cruise and I want to know when starts Kiss Cruise 3. <laughs> When did, what was the last part? You sound like Rudolph Shanker there. <laughs> he says, when is Kiss Cruise 3 going to start? I didn't get that one. <laughs> when's, the, when's the next cruise? Oh, when is the next cruise? We're planning it actually today at one time, 3.30, I think. We have a, we have a, a meeting here on board uh, to go over next year's cruise. We are definitely going to do a cruise. I, I, I love that. And then we're going to come up with new things to do, and, and uh, because it's going to be going on and on and on, we want to do something for the alumni. We're going to come up with something that's different for the people that have been coming on board and stuff like that. So, uh, so 
And like I said, we we had I can't believe it is all over tomorrow morning. You know, my 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 liver likes that. <laughs> but, uh, but we had a ball. Can I book the next cruise today? <laughs> Probably. Just give Doc a hundred dollars of poker chips. Look there you go. Right in on the poker chips. There you go. <laughs> what's up, Doc? Jay from Tampa, originally from New Jersey. You really had to say, what's up, Doc? <laughs> All right, I got two questions. Um, last year, during the Q and A, you had a story with Molly Crew in Japan, yeah. and. They wanted to fight the cops coming off the train or something. I thought that was a great story. I laughed. You ever get the stories like that? And if Eric Carr was still around, do you think they would have brought him back to the Fox if Peter Chris wasn't? Um, well, I, I don't think he would have came back to the Fox because everybody felt that that whole stuff was not good. Uh, I think there's four four guys and. Those characters are the four characters, you know, and that's that's how Kiss is going to be able to go on forever, because you're just going to find another Catman or another, you know, Space Ace or another Star Child, and I, I I think that Kiss can go on for as long as they do great shows because it's a it's not just musically, it's a it's it's kind of like you know, Blue Man Group to a certain extent. That if you put on a great show for people, people will come and see that show. You know, so and I think that the music is strong enough that it'll continue to roll as the members, you know, can't play anymore. Now Gene will be there until he's you know, until he's ninety years old, he'll be at the end of the driveway with a walker. <laughs> story in Japan was awesome. I couldn't stop laughing how Tommy Lee wanted to fight the cops coming off the train. Yeah. You have another story? That was fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> Any other stories like that would be great. Awesome. Thanks. Well, the, the, probably the worst one in the world. That, that was kind of fun getting arrested in Tokyo with Nikki. But I, we were doing the Monsters of Rock. Did I tell that story last year? Monsters of Rock with ACDC and Van Halen. Yeah. So it's our first show in Stockholm with Molly, and then and Warner Brothers threw this big press party for everybody. So my guys at this point are the Dark Angels, okay, chemically induced. Uh, but they thought that it was cool to bite people. If they liked you, they would bite you, and they wouldn't just let them bite you; I mean, they would bite you. So. Nikki gets up and walks over and bites Eddie Van Halen on the shoulder. <laughs> and Eddie's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so, anyways, about 20 minutes later, Tommy goes over and bites him on the arm. <laughs> and now, uh, because they like him. And I, 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 I'm not watching that, I'm talking to somebody. Right? So then Vince goes over to bite Eddie and Eddie grabs him by the face and throws him over on the table and they're fighting it out. And then David Lee Roth gets up and goes, Wah! And he goes, and he goes, and he goes, and then Tommy Lee goes, oh yeah, I'll fuck you up. And he goes, and he goes, and he goes, right? So now Nikki's standing there and Malcolm Young from ACDC is standing there. And of course, he's this big. So he looks up at Nikki and goes, you know me? If you try to bite me, I'll chew your fucking ear off. <laughs> and Nicky, Nicky, you know, same guy, he grabs Malcolm by the hair, smashes his head up against the wall and says, and I'll tear your head off and shit down your neck, you little bitch. <laughs> and he throws him, and he throws him, and that's how my night's going, right? <laughs> so, I had to get him out there, we go back to the hotel, and so then we get thrown off the tour. We haven't even played the show yet. <laughs> we're, we're, playing the, we're playing the next day. So I'm on the phone with all the managers and they're going, you're off the tour. I said, well, listen, you know, Mo Motley's probably as hot as any one of the bands at the moment. They were huge. 
And I said, I think you got a riot on your hands. I said, we'll, we'll just go and uh, do our show and get out of there. And so they didn't want to do it, but then they said, okay, all right, you have to do it because of the ticket sales and everything else. They said, but when you get there, you got to get in your trailer, and we're going to have a crane pick up a trailer. <laughs> and then we're going to we lower the trailer when it's time for them to go on. <laughs> they, they, they go on. But this is this, uh, this is going on like 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm mean, 7, 7 o'clock in the morning doing this. So I'm going, hmm. So of course I wake them up at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Right? After I'm thrown out of the hotel. <laughs> and um, I go, uh, listen, uh, we got a little problem. And I go, well, what? I said, well, you fucking bit Eddie Van Halen last night. Did you guys not see this? You know? He pissed off everybody. I go, why? Did fucking somebody say something? <laughs> no, did somebody say something? on the phone since 7 o'clock in the morning. So they go, well, fuck them. I go, well, good, that's great, it's awesome. So now I, we're in the van headed to the show, and I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what, how I'm going to tell them that they were going to be picked up by a <laughs> I, I'm going to have to do some maneuvering. You know? Like when they get there and the crane is hooked up to it, they go, what's that? Well, fuck, I don't know, it's a, it must be some Swedish thing. <laughs> so, anyways, I fixed it all. We did the show, and, and uh, so now they get, get up to the stage, they want to watch Van Hill. <laughs> they go, dude, we're gonna, we're gonna get to watch Van Hill. They go, no, you don't, you gotta get in the van. <laughs> so, we got about it. That was our first time on the Monsters of Rock tour. Uh, Doc, this is Gabby from Germany, and she'd like to know if there will be a European Kiss Cruise. You know, we're talking about it, but you know, there's about 60% of you guys out here from all over the place. So, you know, for, for, that's outside the U.S. I think it's like 60% of the people who bought packages are outside the U.S. So, yeah, I mean, we, we like the ideas. I mean, we're, we're not sure what, what we're going to do. We want to really solidify this here to make sure that we have this as a solid thing. And we may do, we may do one of you. We talked about Europe. We actually talked about one in Japan because of the, the because the Japanese have been talking to us about doing the cruises, but you know, we'll probably only do if we do. We'll probably only do one or two cruises a year at the most, you know, because we just have so much other stuff to do as well. And um, as long as we can get everybody to do and have the right cruise, because I mean, how, how guys? How, I mean, how are you guys about the weather when you're about to come down here with the hurricane? Oh, we're going, well, this is perfect. <laughs> I can't wait to throw up in my cabin. <laughs> so, and then did you see it on the news when uh, they had a carnival cruise go out of New York? And they had a, the people in their iPhones and shit's flying everywhere. All, all over the people's room and the doors are slamming and the phone rings is Paul. <laughs> nice. <laughs> This is going to be really fun. So, <laughs> so but we lucked out. We did. So, so we lucked out. You go to where the weather is. That's what you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, Doc. I'm Andy from Ottawa, Canada. And uh, I want to know, if you were the fifth member of KISS on stage, what persona would you have chosen for yourself? <laughs> I thought I'd be a, maybe a squirrel. <laughs> Something like that. Hey, Doc. Um, uh, Peter from Manalpa, New Jersey. Uh, I was at the Sirius Town Hall meeting a few weeks ago, and I asked Paul and Jean um, 
what made them so successful and I'm a business owner and I need to be successful in my own business. So I guess I'll ask your advice too. As a business owner, what do you feel like advice you would give to whether whatever the profession is, how they can be successful in your own business? Well, I mean, it's actually fairly easy uh, because all you have to do is wake up in the morning and be the best whatever you are. You know, if you, if you don't have to be me or you don't have to be Gene or you don't have to be the President of the United States, uh, if you're a welder, be the best welder. If, you're, if you're, you want to be the janitor, be the best janitor. You know, and I think that that's how, if you stay focused on your path, you find your path and you don't swerve. You stay focused on what you're doing and you'll get there. It's only when you're leaving and you, you know, once you hit the speed bump, you got to pull back in. People sway all over, they want to do this and this, and, and nobody gets focused on what they do. So I try to teach all my staff, you know, that everybody that, that, that works with us to stay in their path. To don't get in my path, don't get, don't get the production guy's path, don't get in this, is, whatever, what, if you're the guitar tech, that's all you do. And you be the best guitar tech. We try to keep everybody in their lanes. So, and I think that that makes them better because they don't have to worry about my stuff. They don't have to worry about anybody else's stuff. So I think it's just staying true to yourself and being the best. And then that's what, that's what gives you, I think that's what I think it gives you the self-esteem that you, you know, you're proud of what you do. Because then, and to the extent, so it's not easy to be the best. You have to work at it. You know, and nothing comes easy. That's for sure. So it's just work, stay in your stay in your lane and and be the best you can be. And I think that that's how you get successful. We got to talk about the beauty outside of DC. Uh, a couple of quick ones is, as we all say here, thank you very much. Please make sure the band knows how much we appreciate it, even though I know they do. But I hope they feel it. Second thing is possibly maybe consider for the next few years a, um, a fan input on the play set. Possibly yeah, 50, 60 yeah. songs. I don't know. But just you know, something to think about. We've got time to plan. If they would consider a fan input on the set list. Second is, did Jeans, Jeans Moore, was she, did he get her out of there in New York before Sandy? Uh, no, she stayed. She, she, didn't want, she didn't want to leave. She's a, she's a diehard, she's she's a hard woman, she doesn't believe me. Yeah, she just, uh, so, so she wanted to stay and uh, and she was trying to get her to come out, but she, she was she was staying out. And one last one. Is there any way you can check into getting somebody else other than Live Nation to work some of the merchandise? <laughs>
Uh, Jerry was, uh, you know, he was, he's a great kid. You know, he's not a kid anymore, but he, uh, you know, very hard work. There, there's somebody that, that really worked at his craft because he wasn't very good and, uh, when he first started. And uh, he was South Side Charming, you know, that, that stuff. And he really, he really watched Van Halen and watched Kiss and all the tours that we put on and watched Paul Stanley and watched Klaus Mine and watched all, all of them. And he really, he really stole from the best. And, um, and, it's, and he's a very, very good friend of mine. I mean, very, we talk all the time. So uh, it was a it was a fun time in my life. Thank you so much. So we got a few more now. Hey, Doc, from calling from Toronto, Canada. I heard of all the wonderful merchandise that goes along with all the shows. I thought one of the best pieces from the Live 35 and Sonic Room Tours was getting an actual copy of the concert. Yeah. Yeah, we could have done, done that. I'll tell you what happened. See, during those during all that time period, we were out of what they call a re-recording restriction, so we could re-record songs uh, because we had to deal with Universal that would uh, block us from doing that. So during all that period of time, we didn't have uh, a record deal per se. We just put out our own records. So that way. They couldn't stop us from from doing the live recordings. Now we're into a deal with with uh, Universal again to do a lot of catalog stuff and new things. This is one of the things that we're trying to bring back for this tour. But I like the idea. I like the idea. But uh, we that's why we did it. You know, we would still be restricted, but we probably should have talked about it. Maybe this is for next year. You know, maybe that'll be a yeah. piece of mobile stuff. Kissology 4. Uh, that's, that's, that's coming. Kissology 5. Hey, questions up here. Keep it down. Hello, <laughs> Doug. We're coming from Orlando, and they started to address my question earlier about replacements uh, for you know, basically Paul and Jean here. Uh, is there a particular name for this? If we're hearing things like KISS 2.0, is that what you're going to call the next generation? And is there a specific timetable for that? No, there's no real timetable. We're just all getting older, you know. And so I, I think that, and I don't think you call it anything but KISS, because you know, I, I think that that's, that is what you're trying to represent, like uh, KISS the new generation here something like that. This should just be KISS. You don't have you don't have Superman 7 or you don't have, you know, Power Rangers 19 or something like that. This is I think it's KISS and it should represent it should be of quality and 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 uh, everything should fit should be just like these characters. And these guys are characters. You know, the demon is a demon. You know, and, 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 and Paul's Paul, and, and Tommy's Tommy, or the, you know, the actual the space man, or whatever. And Cat and I think that's what you do, and you just continue to give great shows, be true to your fans, and they will all come. That's Tom. I do come. I'm uh, Thierry from uh, France. First of all, uh, thank you so much for this uh, amazing cruise. Excuse me, because I lost my voice. <laughs> uh, we need two questions, please. Will it be possible for the next Kiss Cruise, uh, for the acoustic uh, uh, show, to do um, uh, the, the show with the makeup? And uh, the dress to kill outfits. I think Paul's the only one that has a suit. <laughs> uh, 
No, but we, we've been toying with the idea of Dressed to Kill. We were toying with the idea of doing different shows for different albums at different periods. And also having a fan. We were talking about having a fan list to, to yeah. do it. So, so we, 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 we like, we like uh, you know, because we have so many albums, it's hard to pick like what you're going to do or pick a period of time to do it in. But uh, like we did with Kiss the Live 35. But um, yeah, I mean, we, it might, we might get a dress to kill out of it. I actually didn't, didn't like that record, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. thanks. And we have a second question. Uh, why Kiss don't do uh, video clips, uh, real video clips for their uh, singles? Uh, we're actually in the midst of doing one for a long way down. So, uh, uh, we shoot it as soon as we get back from, from uh, so I don't think the time, I think the timing has to be right to the things come out when they're good. And I don't think you can put a time frame on it and say, because this is going to go on for the next two and a half years. So, we want it to be something special and uh, we want it to be different and not just a live concert song.